Hi everyone. Okay, so let's have a conversation. Getting situated here. Ooh, it's been just a little bit since I've had a video posted. And I wanted to update you guys on my first home study that I did today and tell you guys a little bit about that. So where I left off on my journey, um, I had just moved into this place. This is the living room area. Um, and my kitchen is that way, front door is that way. That is the bedroom there uh, and bathroom in there. So I had just moved into this place and did a sort of a like a preliminary home study or not home study, like approval. When I moved into, when I started this process, I was in another place and they approved that place. But if you go back to listen to some of the old videos and I'll link it up here or up there, um, you'll see uh, my old place and the story behind that and why I ended up having to move. So they did like a preliminary approval here just to make sure that this place was gonna work. So now, um, the so the last video I was sharing with you guys about that. So today's video, I want to talk about what this home study process has uh, was like today and what it's gonna be like over the next couple weeks. So my the worker that I'm working with at the uh, Aviva Family and Children Services here in Los Angeles got switched to a new woman. Um, her name is Kelsey. So um, the woman that I was working with, Magali, she is really, really swamped. She's got a lot of people that she's sort of onboarding and recruiting for fostering, and she kind of needed um, some help. So Kelsey got pulled in, which is awesome because Kelsey is the actual adoption coordinator. So this kind of works out really well because if it ever gets to the point where I end up adopting the child that I am fostering, um, Kelsey already will have known me. She can vouch for me, speak for me, and she's doing my home study who would end up having to had read through my home study and, and go through that process anyway with me at the time of the adoption. So it's actually a really great thing that she's doing the home study for me. So today we did a virtual session. It's going to be about four sessions long, which will end up being about four weeks long. And the last one will be in person in my house. Kelsey will come over. We'll do the last home study session. And at that time, she will run through this like three page checklist that I have um, for my entire home. Make sure I have everything they told me to get. It's totally baby proofed and all of that good jazz. Once that's done, she will sign off and I will be approved. So today's session was relatively short. Um, we a they asked me questions about like who my mother was, my father was, who my mother is, who is my father. They asked me questions about my brothers, uh, you know, their, their wives, their children, things like that. Just like general, general questions about them. And then they asked me about my work. You guys know that I'm a realtor here in Los Angeles and um, some other questions about some personal things about my life, which I'm not gonna share all those details here, but just some personal things. Oh, they also asked me about some of my references and the things that they had mentioned on their documentation about um, that. And then we went into, like I had questions about dating and as I date, I don't know how much I shared with you guys, but obviously you know that I'm single, but as I am in the dating pool, I need to be thinking about the people that are that I'm gonna bring into my life. So the way that it works when you're fostering, if you're fostering as a single person um, and you're also dating in life, you have to make sure that the people that are gonna be spending a lot of time around your children that you're fostering are um, approved if that person is like, heavily in your life. If they're going to be spending the night all the time or at your home, or you're going to spend the night all the time at their home, or they're going to be with the child alone ever, like not, well, not ever, but like super consistently. If you're, if you're deep into a relationship with someone, while they're not 
uh, consider the caretaker, the, the foster parent to that child, but because they are going to be so involved in your life, they have to be uh, get a background check. So basically they'd have to do the same thing as I did, get their fingerprints taken. You just go to like a, um, like I just went to a little, it's like this little mom and pop shop. I know that also the UPS stores do them. Uh, they do the live scans and they do your fingerprints and basically the adoption agency makes sure you have no felonies, no sexual abuse charges, things like that. And once, um, once they are approved with the background, well then, you know, it's, it's safe, obviously, everything's a go. Uh, but they, the reason that they do that, and this is something that we had a conversation about today, the reason they do that is because they wanna make sure that the people that are gonna be spending significant time around the children are safe people to be spending time around the children. Um, so that's that, we talked about that. Uh, we had a conversation about uh, the process as far as um, once you're placed with the child. So she she did say that my home study process should be finished by Thanksgiving. And she mentioned that most of the people at their agency end up getting phone calls the day they're approved for a child. Now, I said to her, well, you know, what are the things where, like, what, what do you guys caution, like, if, like if I say, if you call me for, hey, we have this child, would you like to be placed with this child? And I say, no. Um, she said, look, we're not going to penalize you for saying you don't wanna take a child. Um, if you don't feel comfortable taking a child, we want you to say no, which was encouraging. She said that they once had someone who said no, 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 until finally they said, you know, you should really take this child and they agreed to, and that person ended up adopting that child. Um, I liked hearing this because it it gives me like, I, I wanna say flexibility, but it also makes me feel supported by them knowing like, we're not gonna just try and dump children on you or a child on you. I'm not gonna be fostering any more than one child um, at a time. So, because you wanna make, I think it's important to make sure that you're comfortable through this entire process so that then the child can be comfortable through the process. Um, because we wanna make sure that we're providing the, the, the mental and developmental and even physical uh, developmental needs of the children while they're with you. Because when, when a child, let's say I, I am fostering a child for three months only, it's a sad thing to have to give that child back, right? Because you end up falling in love and loving this child, nurturing them. But what I'm learning is that when, if that child was in their home, they would have not been getting the needs, developmental needs that they need at that time in their home. That's why they were taking from their home. So I'm getting to be of service and giving that child the developmental needs that they would have needed for that three months of their life. So we had a we had good conversation around that stuff. So our next meeting is next week, which I believe will be a longer uh, Zoom meeting. And we, she said, well, we will get into deeper uh, questions about my life. Um, she did mention uh, that it's not that they don't want, so they don't want like perfect, it's not that they don't want perfect pe families, like, but like they're not, I think this is the way to say it. They're not scared or intimidated or shy away from people or families that want to foster that don't have the mo most picture perfect lives. Like I didn't grow up like having to need. I, I grew up in a normal middle-class family um, I had all of my needs met. Um, I never went hungry. I never, you know, struggled. But I didn't have the perfect life. Like, I am gay. I struggled emotionally with that. I definitely understand what it feels like to be, you know, sad and and those those things, right? But, and, and I said to her, like, my home study isn't going to be this, horrible, like, like I, I don't know that I'm gonna have that much to share with you. And she said, look, we 
encourage people that don't have picture perfect lives because these kids don't have picture perfect lives. They are coming from trauma. So they want people who understand that. And, you know, I think there's parts of my life that, that I do understand a little bit of trauma. It's hard growing up gay. It's really, really, really difficult. You know, thankfully I'm a grown man in my thirties and I've done so much work around that in my life that now I'm empowered and I love myself and I'm grateful for the person that I am and the things I've been through and look forward to nurturing and loving a child. And a lot of the things that I've been through in life are actually the things that provide me with the most love to give to a child or a partner in my life, you know, romantically. So that was basically it for today. Um, there, are, there are some things I'm learning about this process and what it means to go through the dating process while going down this journey of fostering and what do, what do people think? I've, I've literally met, you know, people that were, you know, like, I met someone who was super down for the foster thing and it did scare me a little bit because I thought maybe like they were more interested in the fact that I'm becoming a foster parent and then they were in me and you know I, I I it's it's a little scary you have to like you have to learn to measure and gauge you know people while never having done this like I've never I've never been a father before other than to my dog and, and cat but to a human so there's a lot of I'm already dealing with the unknown no, you know, having to go into dating, it's like, you just don't know all the answers. Um, but I do know this. I do know that I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to love and nurture a child. And I hope that whomever I embark down a romantic life with, that they're on board and they're just as like, happy for me and happy to be involved. Um, I had a conversation with someone and, and I had said that I want to make, I want, I don't want to be partners, uh, boyfriends, dating, whatever, like romantic committed partner to someone. If I don't feel like that person could ever be a role model or father figure to my child. Whether I had a child when I met someone or not, like even if I didn't have a child and I met someone, if I didn't see fatherly qualities in that person, that's not someone that would attract me. Like even before I was ever thinking about fo fostering, like I only went on dates with people that I thought we're interested in monogamy. We're interested in long-term relationships. We're interested in one day having children. I never would have been um, going down a path of getting to know someone that didn't have those traits. So as I go down this fostering journey, as I go down this you know dating path of mine, it's like two things that are coming together and um, you know, I, I'm the type of person that only dates one person at a time. I, you know, I don't, I think dating multiple people at one time is just, it's too much. It's too much to juggle. And I like to invest in one person and get to know that person. And, and hopefully that works out. You know, you put your energy where you want it to go type of thing. So, but anyway, that's where I'm at with this process. Um, I will try and do another video next week. I've been really busy with real estate um, if you guys follow my other channel, uh, you can just search Kevin Gertis or Kevin Gertis Real Estate. You can see other vlog videos of me. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then I got another uh, donation to the GoFundMe campaign. So, you know, some of you guys know that I have a GoFundMe campaign, which is just helping with like once the baby gets here, like a super uh, needs that are that are needed. I have a lot of stuff already some things that have been donated and i've purchased a lot of stuff um but like i've shared because it's this is a foster situation i can't really buy too much because i don't know the age of the child so 
Donations really will help with like diapers. Once I know the age of the child, I can then buy the diapers. With formula, once I know if that child's already on any formula and things like that, then I can um, I can know which uh, formula to buy and, and, and stuff like that. But honestly, like things are pretty solid right now. And, and um, yeah, so uh, any links for anything will be in the description below. And that's the update for now. I really enjoy just doing these like super laid back, chill videos. I just got my phone in front of me. I, I, at first I was like, oh, I wanna make this a big production, but not really. I kinda want this just to be chill and real and vulnerable. And like, that's that. So thanks for watching guys. Thank you for uh, supporting. I will say this. I noticed that there are, there is hardly any men that are fostering or adopting that have videos on YouTube. And there's hardly anyone um, that's giving advice on YouTube about this stuff. So I'm really grateful. And I know that there's a need for it from men I think from straight men, I think from gay men, LGBTQ men, like we need to be putting putting this content out there. So I'm happy to be doing it. And if you guys have any questions about this process, please comment below, please like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Peace out, bye.